Good morning and welcome to worship here at the United Church of Christ in Chamberlain. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I have a few announcements. Uh, coffee hour after worship, downstairs in Fellowship Hall. Um, and some good news, the nursery is getting remodeled. The, the sort of bad news is that it's not going to be available today and next Sunday for um, to, to let everything get completed and the paint to dry. Um, but I think you'll, you'll think it's a, a great improvement. It's looking very nice right now. Um, I know there's at least one more announcement. Um, I lost my sticky note, so we're going to go from memory on this and really hope I get it right. Um, they're doing a Bethlehem and Brule County at the Pakwana Egg Building next Sunday, December 18th at 5 p.m. Um, you're all invited to it. They're doing a live nativity, and then there will be a feed afterwards, and um, the donations are going to a couple different um, operations and places that are local um, that's listed on our Facebook page for the details that I don't currently have in my hands. But they're also doing a community choir that night. So if you're interested in singing in the community choir, practice is tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the Trinity Lutheran Church. And again on December 18th at 4 p.m. just before the program starts. Um, there will be on the projector next week the details again to remind you. And check the Facebook page for more information. The, we will be having practice after church for um, the Christmas program that is next next Sunday, the 18th as well. Um, if you ha your child has a speaking part, they have to stay um, to run through that real quick. And then um, if you have not, or we, we are having lunch next Sunday afterwards, the Sunday school um, children are providing that for everybody after the program. Um, so if you have not um, talked to Chantel or Sheena or signed up on the Sign Up Genius for um, bringing something, please go and do that or talk to them um, to help them out with that. Thank you. Thank you. Any more announcements? Are there prayer joys or prayer concerns? I do have one prayer joy. I just found out this morning that Jim Glaus is out of the hospital and is doing well. Uh, we heard that from Shali this morning. So um, praise to God that, that Jim is doing well. He was pretty seriously ill with RSV and pneumonia, but he is apparently past the danger and is, is back home, coming back home. <clears throat> now let us join together to open our worship with the call to worship printed in your bulletin and available on the screen overhead. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, God comes in the power of love and justice, therefore let us wait with eagerness and worship with joy. Let the heavens be glad, let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Shout for joy, all the earth. Let us pray. Holy God, we long for your peace and trust in your promise. We hear your call to turn toward you, to change our lives and to welcome you in. Meet us here and fill our minds with your wisdom and our hearts with your peace, that our worship together may open us to the challenge of your dream of wholeness for all. In the name of the one who is coming, we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 120, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
John the Baptist called the people to repentance, to prepare them for the coming of God's reign. Therefore, let us too repent that we may be ready to the God who comes to us. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy and loving God, we give thanks for the promise of this sacred season and for the joy we find in the Christ child. Yet even as we rejoice, we recognize that we often fail to live with the hope of redemption. In this season, to be distracted by our own projects and preparation. We lose focus on the one who is the source of our joy. Forgive us, God, and restore our hope in you. Amen. The promise of the season of Advent is the promise of Emmanuel, God with us. God calls us to keep awake so that we are ready for God's arrival. Therefore, let us lay aside all those things that distract us from faithful watching for God. Friends, believe the good news in the gospel that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. And so let us celebrate that great grace by offering one another the sign of Christ's peace. Listen now for the word of God in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the second chapter, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and it shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instructions, instruction, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate the many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Our epistle lesson comes from James's epistle, chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Our gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers, are, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone 
who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. in darkness have seen a great light. Those who, land, who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. Week by week, the light grows stronger and brighter as we anticipate the coming Christ. The candles of hope and love are already ablaze. Today, we light the candle of joy. We excitedly anticipate the coming of the Mighty One, the promise of healing, comfort, Liberty and freedom is good news that is meant to be shared. Rejoicing at the mercy and justice of our Lord, we kindle this flame. Together, we lift our hearts and voices in songs of joy. like to come join me here on the chancel steps. Good morning. I'm happy to see so many excited people. Well, today is the third Sunday of Advent. That means we're halfway through. Halfway through our journey to Christmas. And we're continuing to learn more from the prophet Isaiah. In today's lesson, he tells us that people who are seeking God so that he may teach us his ways and we might walk God's paths. What do you think God's path might look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Path of gold, that would sure be something. Or it might look like Interstate 90 with four lanes of traffic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like treasure, yes. Yeah, yep. Yeah, those are all good answers. Um, but but um, it can also be a, a path that's that's not a like a real hard path, right? Um, the, um, God's path might look like um, uh, it doesn't go to places on earth. It takes you into friendship with God. So um, those, are all, uh, those are all neat things and, and we can all walk that path, but really God's path takes us into friendship with God. And my hope that all of us here will choose God's path because it will take us from wherever we are into friendship with God. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we give you thanks for the birth of your son Jesus, who made possible the holy way so that all of us might know you. Help us to be faithful travelers on your path. Amen. Amen. 
Okay. Come on up here, buddy. We got something for you. You don't have to wait any longer. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Our next hymn is number 132, O Come All You Faith. John the Baptist must have realized that this was coming all along. After all, he was just too vocal, too anti-establishment, too in-your-face, and let's face it, just a little too weird. The one who was preparing the way in the wide-open wilderness is now captive in a prison cell. The one who baptized the Son of God in the Jordan River is dependent on his jailer to bring him a cup of cold water. The one who was sure of who Jesus was now wonders, are you the one who is to come? Really? Matthew writes, when John heard what Jesus the Messiah was doing, actually, Matthew could have written, 
when John heard what Jesus was not doing. See, Jesus wasn't following John's outline for his ministry. Jesus wasn't following John's mission statement for Jesus, his step-by-step -step plan for successful messianic ministry. John had told the people that the axe was lying at the root of the tree, ready to chop down anything unworthy. He had promised that the chaff would burn in unquenchable fire. <laughs> but Jesus didn't seem to be getting with the program. None of the chaff seems to have been burned off. And that must have been a disappointment to John. He was at that very moment sitting in prison, awaiting his own beheading because he dared to stand up and challenge King Herod because of Herod's unrighteous marriage. If Jesus were looking for some chaff, some unworthy chaff, worthy of burning, he could start by lighting a match to King Herod and get John out of prison. But instead, Jesus is pronouncing forgiveness, healing the sick, bringing the good news to the poor. Was that what really what Jesus is supposed to be doing? Are you the one who is to come, or should I hope for someone else? Sometimes Jesus did and said strange things, or certainly unexpected things, things that aren't maybe what we had hoped for. And because of that, John asks, and his disciples ask, and we ask, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for someone else? Each of us has expectations of what kind of a savior that we want. Some do want a fire and brimstone breathing Messiah who points out what everyone else is doing wrong. Some of us want a Jesus who will be the champion of our favorite cause, who will assure us that God is indeed on our side of this issue. Maybe we, though, are ones that want a gentle shepherd who just doesn't demand a whole lot of us but only assures us that he loves us. But sooner or later, though, our ideas of Jesus bump up against the reports of what he is doing, either in Scripture or in the world. Jesus, the real Jesus, the real Messiah, will at times upset our expectations. He will ask, do you want to follow the living Christ, or do you want to worship your own idea of who that Christ is? should be. You want the thrill and hope and challenge of a life with the living Christ, or merely the comfort of worshiping an idol of your own making? These are gentle words, yet in a way they're just as challenging as John's when John talks about the axe being at the root of the tree or the chaff being burned in unquenchable fire. These words are challenging, even to John. And John wondered if Jesus was really the one that he should hope. It's a different hope than he expected. So he went to Jesus and he asked. John couldn't get there in person, so he sent his disciples. But John went to the source instead of just muddling along or making assumptions or staying in the dark about who Jesus is. We're invited to do the same, to go to Jesus with our questions our concerns, our wondering. Participate in the way Jesus has given to our church to know him, know him better, to gather in community, study with other Christians and wanderers, pray, take communion, worship, praise him, even when we drop the ball. Maybe Jesus wasn't exactly what John was expecting. He brought fire, but it was the fire of the Holy Spirit. He sought out sinners only to forgive them. He really let the unworthy have it, but what he let them have was grace, grace upon grace. John couldn't see it for himself, locked away in that prison cell, so he asked, and in reply he received a beautiful vision. The blind received their sight. The lame walk, lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear and the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. Amen. Our choir anthem is Amen, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we say amen and help us to go to it on the mountain, whatever mountain that may be. We thank you for your presence here in worship today. We thank you for your presence during this week. We thank you for the, the good news and we thank you for the comfort that you brought us with the bad news. We ask for your continued presence in each of our lives and in the life of this congregation, in the life of our community, in the life of our denomination, in the life of our nation, and in the life of the entire world. We thank you for being present with us in those good times and bad times. And we thank you for the opportunity that we have to share our own joys and concerns with you in prayer. And so today, especially, we would pray for Sherry Williamson's son-in-law, Raphael, and his family, for her daughter, Darcy, and granddaughter, Isabel, for Haven Talish, for Florian Blouse, for Jerry Murphy. We pray for David Laheska, for Anne and Boyd Theo, for Ronnie Reimer and Sally Reimer and Diane Feline. We pray for Harold Hubbard. We pray for Debbie Bice, for Susan Miller, Tom Pringle, Jim and Darren. We pray for Lois Morganfield, for Scott Busick, for Irvin Heem. We pray for Mike Schreiber, for Lonnie Neiman, for Daniel Horn, for Corbin Lingaman. Pray for Al Schofield. We pray for the family of Meta Davis. We pray for the recovery of Jim Glaus. We thank you for that recovery and continue to pray for him. Lord, to these who, and all your people, all who are homebound, ill or in depression or just at a loss in life, we would pray for your presence in each of their lives. And now we come to you using the words that Jesus, our Savior himself, taught to his disciples when they asked him to teach them to pray. When we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will continue our worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings.
join me in the offertory prayer. Gracious God, we rejoice as we offer these gifts in response to the great things you have done for us. We give thanks especially for the great love born of clothed in human flesh. We pray that Jesus will be born anew into our hearts and that the witness of our lives will convince others of the wonder and miracle of Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 114, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. Your faith in your worldly status and never underestimate your heavenly importance. Let your trust in the coming Christ soar within you like wings of joy. Go out into the world and serve one another as God bearers. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Creator through Jesus our Savior in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit our nurturer be with you this day and forevermore.